we're going to move on to our second topic. Um, this is one that we've been asked several times in our live stream about, and I have not answered it because it's worthy of a conversation. And that is the future of the Zelda series. So essentially the question goes to this. Will we see a new Zelda game on Switch? Uh, if we are, when will it release? Uh, and are there any improvements? Like, there, There's another part to this, but we'll stop after. Uh, is there any improvements over Breath of the Wild that we'd like to see? And I think that's in response to the fact that... Uh, S- Satoru Iwata, I'm sorry. Uh, A.G. Aonuma, I was trying not to say his name because I always butcher it. <laughs> he uh, he recently, or not so recently, I guess now, but he stated that like all future Zelda games are going to be open world, essentially. So obviously whatever's next is going to build off of Breath of the Wild in some way. Uh, so I'm going to toss that to the hype man himself. The whole reason I discovered him because of your Zelda theories. Um, yeah. Well, do you think we're going to get a new Zelda this year? What What do we need to, or not this year, but on Switch? <laughs> That'd be impressive. I was about to be like, yo, <laughs> yo, yo, this year, what? Yeah. You hear something? <laughs> oh boy. What are your thoughts, HMK? All right. So, like, a new Zelda game on Switch. Uh, I was actually uh, talking with this uh, with another bunch of uh, a couple of my friends and uh, fellow YouTubers. Uh, about this specifically, uh, Zeltic and uh, Commonwealth Rum. Um, will you see a nerd, a nerd new Zelda game on Switch? I believe so, absolutely. Uh, the biggest reason I do believe is because uh, Breath of the Wild, well, we all know this, it was originally envisioned and developed as a Wii U game. You know, it came onto the Switch last minute, thank God. You know, I, I was, <laughs> yeah. I will admit, I was one of the big, biggest detractors in life. Man, they're, they're, we, we, all the people who bought this Wii U, uh, this was supposed to be our game, where they're just going to, you know, throw us under the bridge like that. And I'm like, okay, thank God this game came on the Switch. <laughs> and like, you know, so I was one of those, like, yeah, I said that, I'm going I'm to hold my L on that. But, yes, this game was built for the Wii U. It was intended for the Wii U. It was not intended for the Switch. So I don't feel that Breath of the Wild really pushed Switch to its full potential yet and i feel that a new zola game uh afterwards on breath of the wild could do that now uh interesting that you brought up uh that what i john numa said about how this is gonna you know all features of the games on consoles are gonna be open world yes he said that he said that breath of the Wild is probably gonna be the new standard the new mold for Zelda games uh, on the consoles moving forward now i do believe that breath of the wild is gonna act as a base even as great as it was I felt like a lot of things within the game felt like a test. You know, um, th- this thought and this quote, uh, just I keep whenever I think about things like that about games that felt kind of testy, where you know uh, some things didn't feel I wouldn't say complete, but it felt like you know they were trying new things, but they didn't want to go all the way in with that mm-hmm. specific new thing. Uh, biggest example is Assassin's Creed Three. A lot of people were waiting for Assassin's Creed Three. I I was waiting for Assassin's Creed Three. So when me and my brother played this game, you know, we were like, okay, it was good, but it didn't you know push out all of its potential especially with the uh with the missions that concern uh the ship yeah. you know when they, sailing they the seas like or whatever over too. right so um when assassin's creed 4 came out black flag when we played it we're like this game is amazing and then my brother's like yo assassin's creed 3 was basically a beta test for assassin's creed 4 and that resonated with me is like he's right you know they tested out the ship features in assassin's creed 3 and they expanded them exponentially in yeah. Assassin's Creed yeah. 4. Built a game so, around it, basically. Right. So I feel that the test, these new tests that they uh, that Nintendo is doing with Breath of the Wild, you know, the open world, the physics, uh, the dungeons, and all that stuff, like this new take on what is Zelda. I feel that the next Zelda game after Breath of the Wild is going to build upon that. And you know, as we all know, with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, it took you know, Majora's Mask was built directly upon Ocarina of Time's engine. You know, what's to say they can't do the same thing with Breath of the Wild? And, you know, they've even done something like that similar not too long ago with Triforce Heroes and A Link Between Worlds. Triforce Heroes directly lifted A Link Between Worlds' engine, and that game came out two years afterwards. You know, they can easily do something like that in the same vein of Majora's Mask and Triforce Heroes, where they lift Breath of the Wild's engine and then just expand on that, or not even expand on the entire game, but expand on maybe one, two, or even three concepts that made that game great. And I feel those concepts as physics, open world, and the ability to, to do anything at any point in the game. How can they expand it and make it better? I've talked about this many times with all my Zelda friends and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, 
yeah, the Divine Beasts were great. The Shika Shrines were great. But it, it, it playing this game made me yearn for the old school Labyrinth style Dungeons of Old. That's why I really hope that the DLC <laughs> Pack 2 Champions, the Champions Ballad, I really hope the dungeon within that DLC would be another quote unquote test for Nintendo where they bring back that style of dungeon, a big, huge, puzzle filled Labyrinth style dungeon for Breath of the Wild. Because we didn't have any of that in Breath of the Wild. So they can test that type of feature from the old Zelda games in the Breath of the Wild uh, setting with the physics and, you know, tweak on how it could fit within those physics and world and then apply that within the next Zelda game. Sure. And so we can have, you know, those big dungeons that we've missed. You know, people like to argue that Hyrule Castle, oh, yeah, you wanted a big dungeon labyrinth style, Hyrule Castle at the end of the game. Yeah, it was huge. It was big. It wasn't really labyrinth style. I can go into any which where I can. They hardly had any puzzles. You can basically you know, skip the whole thing if you do it right. Exa yeah, exactly. So I, I want that nice big labyrinth style dungeon where you know there's puzzles there's tricks there's secrets that you can explore and apply that to breath of the wild put that on top of everything uh, on on top of everything that made breath of the wild great can you imagine a zelda game with sheikah shrines with divine beasts with labyrinth style huge dungeons with underwater exploration because we didn't <laughs> oh. get that in breath oh. of the wild at all how you know, i don't, can't believe we did with how much water was in the game yeah Oh. Exactly. Can yeah. you imagine a Zelda game with all of that? I, you know, as great as amazing Breath of the Wild was, I felt this game was the biggest stepping stone ever in gaming for something greater. And I feel that something greater is right around the bend. You know, a lot of people say, "How can you top Breath of the Wild?" I'm like, "Easy, man. So easy." Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, if Nintendo does jump on that, they can easily do something like that, lifting Breath of the Wild's engine within the Switch's lifespan. So, yes, I do believe we're going to get another Zelda game on Switch. And, yes, I do believe it can be greater than Breath of the Wild if they apply everything I just said. And even more, because with Zelda games, it's all about surprises. Every Zelda game has its own surprises. And, you know, I'm, I'm no game developer. I'm not one to tell them how to do their jobs in the end of the day. All I can do is make suggestions. But, you know, they continue to wow me with every Zelda game they come out with. So that's what I got to say in terms of improvements and everything in the next Zelda game whatever. I know exactly what Eric's going to say. It's sold. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. Oh, um, man. For me, though, I I don't necessarily know if we're going to see another actual full-fledged Zelda game itself. I see, of a, I see them more taking Breath of the Wild and expanding it. More DLC. More DLC type of things than the actual brand new full-fledged Zelda game. I, I see them adding on like new worlds... Adding the underwater parts to it, adding this, adding that to it. Plus, it kind of, uh, in my honest opinion, it kind of sets up a prequel. Yeah. Um, about all the things that happened leading up to Link falling asleep. Right. Um, that's an interesting perspective, uh, because obviously the DLC has been so far a success. I know it's just master mode and some new costumes and masks and everything, but and oh, I can't forget the trial. Obviously, that's like. The biggest thing for a lot of people is out of the trial. Uh, what's crazy to me, I guess, about the DLC so far, and why I don't know if they're going to do more, is that the DLC is supposedly coming out in the next two months. Mm -hmm. And we know next to nothing about it. We have, like, a little, like, what is it, 15-second clip? Yeah. Link and Zelda riding together. Zelda riding by herself with some soldiers. And then Zelda... Heading into the room, the throne room in Gerudo, and talking to uh, whatever, what's it, whatever her name is, the, queen, the new princess or queen there, the little girl, um, and it's like, yeah, we know that, we know it's called like the Champions Ballad, that that's great, but we know nothing else, and it's almost here. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it's almost the opposite of it's Mario not like Odyssey. It's, it's not like it's going to overshadow Mario Odyssey. I mean, it, it's it yeah, can't. Right. Right, but it's almost the opposite of Mario Odyssey. I feel like they shared way too much of Mario Odyssey, but they're not sharing well, they, anything. Think about how for... much they shared a Breath of the Wild before it came out, and now it's like, oh, we have this new DLC, huge, the most important DLC pack of the game coming out, and you know nothing about it, and yep. it's just buy it because trust us. Yep. Um, which I already bought it, so yeah, yeah, it is, <laughs> oh, yeah. It is what it is. They had me sold, like in Zelda, yeah, yeah. and I, you know, whether or not they could do d good DLC or not, I don't know. Like this is this is the litmus t test for Zelda, and if they can do good DLC because. I think if, you know, because they said they have a new dungeon and 
as HMK mentioned with the dungeon, you know, is this going to be an experimental, a big labyrinth style traditional Zelda dungeon in this world um, to, to so. kind of set things up for the next Zelda game or future DLC, as, as Eric is, is thinking. And I, I, I think I'm trying to temper my expectations because sometimes... Uh, there were references leading up to the release of Breath of the Wild that the shrines were the dungeon replacements. Mm. And I worry that they're just, when they mean new dungeon, they just mean a few new shrines. Um, I hope that's not the case. I don't mind if there's new shrines, but like that can't be the big dungeon. Uh, I would not have paid 20 bucks for some extra shrines. Yes, you would. No, I would not have. Yes, you would. No, I would have just watched it on YouTube. Huh. Uh-huh. I'm I'm, ser- I'm dead serious. If I knew ahead of time I was just paying for new shrines uh, after playing 120 shrines and having <laughs> basically, like, here's 30 of one shrine, 30 of another shrine, 30 of this shrine, 30 of that shrine, having to be the, the exact same thing over and over and over again um, outside of, like, the really cool ones like Eventide Island, um, no, I, I would not pay money just to play what I've already played. Uh, and that's what I worry about with that. I mean, it could be a fifth divine beast and they have another mm-hmm. dungeon that's like that. But as much as I thought those dungeons were nice, uh, they, you know, I, I guess that's nin- what Nintendo would call a traditional dungeon, I guess, in the game. Uh, they lacked originality. Uh, while it was really cool, some of the different aspects that were based on, like, which champion it's after between wind and, mm-hmm. and climbing on a mountain with a lizard and all this stuff, that's great. But the dungeons themselves didn't feel themed in that fashion, right? All four of those dungeons felt the same. Um, just from a presentation wise, from the mechanics, I mean, you're doing the same thing in each dungeon. You have the exact same goal in each dungeon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're fighting four very, very similar bosses, which I understood story wise. It made sense. Yeah. But it's like they, those could be sub bosses. Those could have been mini bosses and there could have been something else on top of that. Like, like, why didn't we fight a dragon? Yeah. There's there's literally dragons flying around the overworld, and we never really have a true battle with one. The closest we get is when we're trying to free one. Like, there's a moment in there where you can go free one, and you're shooting the stuff off it, just like you are in the stupid Divine Beast. <laughs> it's like, it's the same thing, just it, on a dragon. Um, it, it felt like there were some missed opportunities uh, with boss fights, uh, I think boss fights were probably my biggest uh, thing I didn't like about Breath of the Wild that I would like to see them improve in the next game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm okay if they don't have labyrinth style dungeons. I would like them, but they're never were really why I played Zelda anyways. I played it for the adventure, for the exploration, and for the boss fights. So I was really disappointed in those boss fights. The fact that my favorite fight uh, is a optional mini boss in the middle of a desert that reminds me of a certain boss from The Wind Waker... Um, that's my favorite encounter in the game, and you can go the entire time and never face it because there's no purpose to it, to have to face it. It's just you find it through exploration. Yeah. Um, it, it bothers me uh, that like even fights with Hinoxes or like fights with Lynels. There's Lynels everywhere, and like those are a bigger deal than fighting a boss. Yeah. Like when I fought like Lynels in Zelda two, they were really really hard, but the bosses were harder. <laughs> So it's yeah, like, yeah, you're right. Lionels in this seem to whoop your oh, rear end, and then you get I, to the... Full disclosure, I have never beaten a Lionel in Breath of the Wild. Huh? I've, actually done I've, I've had everybody head. tell me, I've had uh, so many fans tell me, here's how you do it, here's the tricks. You do this thing to the head, or you get out of this back, you do this. I'm like, that's great. I understand how to beat it. The problem is, I tense up every time I get close to one, and then I die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, so afraid it's gonna one shot me. It's gonna I'm one shot. Yep. So what you need to do, right, is you just you know walk up to one and just shoot an ancient arrow at it and you're done. Yeah, I I try not to because I feel like ancient arrows are just cheating. It's like a, it's like the golden gun from GoldenEye. Like no skill. No skill. <laughs> Man, they they cost a lot, they're hard to find. I don't wanna like that that those yeah. are they're okay. fair game. My first time through the game in in normal mode, I I was trying to prepare for my fight with, uh, because I, with how hard Lionels were, I was a bad assumption, but I assumed the final fight was going to be like balls to the walls hard. And that I was, because I'm like, man, if they have enemies this hard in the game, how hard is the final fight going to be? Mm-hmm. Like they've been building it up this whole time. It's got to be just epic. Even though the boss fights themselves were just, you know, not even as hard as a Lionel. It's still one of those things like, okay, that, that's fine. Those were just 
um, the manifestations, those weren't the real deal. The real right. deal yeah. is going to be insanely hard, which the final form, just disappointing. But so I decided, you know what? The most powerful arrow in the game is the dang ancient arrow. So I'm like, I'm going to farm supplies. And I farmed for like, God, I wasn't even good at taking out guardians at that time. So like I would go to that one minefield of guardians um mm-hmm. <laughs> where they're all dead except for like two of them walking yeah, around yeah um and i would just kind of sneak around and just keep jacking parts and keep jacking parts and every once in a while I'd, I'd try to take out one of the guardians probably die i'm i'm good at taking them on now but I, back then i wasn't um and so i farmed and i i built up like 50 ancient arrows i'm like all right, i'm set to go to this fight you get to the fight the ancient arrows don't do anything they're just like a normal arrow <laughs> they're useless in the fight basically so i built up all these arrows spent all this time on these really expensive items that basically i'm just walking around and killing one shining guardians with now because i don't need them <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh man i did all this preparation and I, I just didn't need it i'm like this is this is disappointing i mean granted that's my fault obviously uh, i didn't do any research i didn't know anything that was going to happen but um yeah boss fights to me are, are the big thing i want to see improved in the new zelda game as for will there be another one on switch I, it comes down to uh, what Nintendo has intended. Because if there's going to be more DLC for Breath of the Wild after this, I think they would plan that out before release. I think they already know. And they're already working on it. Because um, I could see them... You, you know, we bring up games like Majora's Mask in the past. Well, Majora's Mask, uh, you know, well, it's a fantastic game. Uh, one of my favorite Zelda games ever. To many g- people at the time, it felt like a side dish to Ocarina of Time. So to avoid the side dish effect, they could just release another twenty or forty dollar DLC pack that's basically Majora's Mask, mm-hmm. and just attach it to Breath of the Wild that everyone already owns. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, I mean, you can't tell me that one drive massive hype, especially as long as it has the right trailer and the right amount of content. Right. And this testing ground that HMK mentions kind of proves like if this is a full labyrinth style dungeon that has this big epic boss fight and everything just is awesome and you see all this potential and all of a sudden you know three months from now they have a nintendo direct like, oh by the way we're having a 40 dollar dlc pack coming out that has like eight of these epic dungeons mm-hmm. and uh this entire prequel story and this and that and uh at some point you get to play as one of the champions or play as zelda and like they just go nuts and you're like, okay this is like a whole brand new zelda game for 40 bucks mm-hmm. so yeah uh, but Nintendo's never done that. <laughs> sort of like be like, oh, Nintendo's just gonna do that. Um, oh right. I mean, it, it's possible. It is possible. We don't know. The thing is, the future of Zelda is unknown until we get past this DLC and we start getting any sort of hints. Because usually you get hints early on. Oh, we're working right. on a new Zelda. Yeah. That's all you need to know. We're working on a new Zelda. Um, will we get another one on Switch? Barring something crazy like that, which I think is possible, and if that releases, it's gotta be next year. Because they already have everything, all the assets built. Um, yes, I, I say that tepidly because Nintendo, uh, it's been a while. Skyward Sword was an exclusive on Wii, but it released way late in, in the cycle. And I almost argue it would have been better if they would have found a way to make it work on Wii U and have that as a launch title. Uh, like they did with Twilight Princess and now like they've done with, <laughs> with Breath of the Wild. But it, it's... At the same time, it's kind of that we're at the beginning of a cycle. It usually takes three to five years to make a Zelda game. Lately, it's been five for a console Zelda game. Mm-hmm. And if you look five years out from now, is Switch really? Are, are we not talking about Switch Two at that point? Um, I mean, I hate thinking that, right? Like five years from now, oh my gosh! But you I mean you realistically think about it? Most console cycles are five years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, at that point, it's like, well, should we get it? In, do we want it to have that Skyward Sword release late in the cycle? Or do yeah. we want it to launch the next system and end up doing what Breath of the Wild did, which worked for him last time? Uh, obviously, the caveat is what HMK mentioned. You know, in the past, we've seen Majora's Mask come out two years later. We've seen even Spirit Tracks. You know, he didn't mention that one. That came out two years after Phantom Hourglass because Phantom Hourglass became the highest selling portable Zelda game of all time. And they wrongfully thought. <laughs> that it was because people loved it and so they released another one <laughs> and it bombed <laughs> some of it's because of the trains and some other stuff but reality was that a lot of people bought into it because it was like the best looking portable zelda game ever at the time uh, but it, a lot of user reviews on it weren't too kind um mostly because i think people expected it to be the wind waker 2 and it really wasn't that it wasn't. Um, but people thought it w- w- that that was going to... Because the Wind Waker ended in a way where, okay, there, there, there actually is. Like, they kind of set up a potential Wind Waker 2. Um, but it never happened. 
And uh, and apparently they actually had a Windbreaker two planned at one point, but then they scrapped it for Twilight Princess. So yep, there's there's all that. There's all just some interesting history. I know a lot of my Zelda. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens if you cover the series for eighteen years. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's a really interesting prospect. I think that if they go that route and they basically reuse the entire engine, which I I would be so disappointed if they just threw out this physics engine no, right? after one game. Right? Oh no, dude! I would be mad actually. Like th- they spent so much time on this engine, and I'm not saying they haven't spent time on other engines, but Nintendo has this really bad habit of just throwing out their Zelda game engines and starting from scratch, like every time. And they caught on to something here that isn't, as HMK mm-hmm. said, it, it is not complete. Mm-hmm. This is not the full potential of what they have here. Right. This is a start. And this has been my issue with Zelda games over the years, is that Nintendo has always felt like they need to throw in that gimmick. They need to throw in that one new feature and build the whole game around it, instead of perfecting what they have. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they thought when Ocarina of Time came out, it was perfect, they can't do better than that, so we need to just gimmick it out for the next decade. But I honestly don't think Ocarina of Time was perfect. I think there were a lot of things they could have improved upon that they never really did. Um, And then Breath of the Wild happened, and rewrote the whole game again, and it's yeah. like, okay, great, but this isn't it. Like, I know it can be done better. A lot of people that think this game is perfect, that's great. I'm glad you think it's perfect. It is my favorite game of all time, and I know it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. I know it can get better. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's the possibilities of it that make me just get so hyped about it all over again. <laughs> right. But those possibilities aren't in the game. Uh, even underwater exploration. Some people probably rolled their eyes when HMK said that. Yeah. Because uh, there are some people that just hate the underwater oh, stuff. Hold on, let me put on my blue tunic. <laughs> <laughs> Blue tunic it up. Um, and I understand that, but there is another side to it. The people that love that slow down in gameplay, that thinking, that, that management of can you breathe, can you not breathe. Uh, underwater combat is just a different thing. And I understand it could be vastly different from the game, but it can still fit within the world because it makes sense. Go swimming. You're slower. Yeah. I mean, some people might be able to swim faster than they run, I guess. But uh, in general, if you're going to be exploring an underwater world, you're not going to be doing that at the same speed that you would be exploring on land. Right. Um, maybe you have a jetpack underwater. One of those. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's always ways around it, but that technology yeah. might not exist in Hyrule. I shouldn't say nope. that. All technology yeah. exists in Hyrule, right? They, yeah. have, they have steam trains. They, oh, yeah. they, they have magic walking around robots that shoot laser beams from their eyes now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, they they have they have like literally flying beasts that the Sheikah built, uh, and that's another thing. Like the game is perfectly set up to hey, can we go back to when the Sheikah were like this big dominant yeah, right, thing? Right. You it's happened like two times in Hyrule's history where Sheikah was like the big deal, right? There is way way back before Skyward Sword, like they were a huge deal in the backstory of Skyward Sword, and then they were a huge deal in even before the 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 events of breath of the wild started apparently somewhere after ocarina of time and this period the sheikah became like this big deal again and built all these robots and did all this stuff (laughs) and we've never actually lived an era of hyrule where the sheikah are that prevalent yeah um so like i don't know why nintendo i'm a zelda fan i want a sheikah prevalent game come on we honestly thought we were going to get it with Breath of the Wild. And it felt it. like it. Yeah. It felt, I mean, because yeah. you, you see all the previews, you go into the shrines, oh. you're, you're getting to meet some ancient Chica people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Impus back, and you have the, the researchers, and you're just like, man, this feels, the Chica symbols everywhere. You're uh-huh. like, oh my God, they had such a huge impact. Can we learn, even if we learn what happened, I, I want to I know what were they doing? What did they build? Why? We have, oh, they built it just in case, and it's like, what, just in case of what? I, yeah. Just, I just beat him with, <laughs> just like in Ogre of Time, like, oh, I beat him with a fishing pole. I beat him with weapons that he dropped for me to beat him with. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, it's like, if I could do that, then I, well, why did we need all this tech to stop him? Mm-hmm. Um, you, then that's always been an issue with me with Zelda Games in general, is like, they build up these bosses to be these big bad things, and then you finally fight them. Like that's it. <laughs> like this is what I had to gear up for the last, you know, 20, 40, 50 hours of gameplay when I, I I beat him with items I got at the beginning of the game and never lost yeah. a heart. I literally probably <laughs> could have just thrown a chicken at him and he probably would have died. <laughs> oh well, you can't kill chickens, so I mean, oh, yeah, no, yeah, cuckoo armor, baby. Yeah, oh, I do. I love when you get. Uh, this is how I was actually planning to defeat my first Lionel. Is is throw a cuckoo at it? Yeah. 
Like, that would work, actually. It yeah. would. It would, because yeah. I've seen videos of it taking out enemies. Uh, so I'm like, that would be sick. Like, I get it to, like, fire a lightning thing at me, but I drop the cuckoo there, and I run, and that, let the lightning hit it, and it would just go <laughs> I thought about it, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's one way. I don't even have to do the work. I just, yeah, have, right? to, I yeah. just have to time one little thing, and I win. Yeah. <laughs> just like when people get the Lynels and the uh, the Hinoxes to fight and everything. But, yeah, Breath of the Wild is just full of potential. Mm-hmm. Potential that's never fully realized, but that doesn't make it a, a bad game. It just means that there feels it feels like Nintendo has a clear direction to go, in my opinion, mm-hmm. with a new Zelda game. Whether or not they do it, I don't know, because Nintendo never does what you expect them to do. But, yeah, I, I think Nintendo wants to get a new Zelda game out on Switch. Uh, they want to they wanted, they wanted Majora's Mask this thing. They, they want to build on top of the hype of this game by releasing a new game as fast as they possibly can. Uh, not too fast, like not next year. You know, 2019, 2020, I can see them wanting a new Zelda game to land then. Uh, especially when you're talking about, okay, well now we're getting... Three, four years out from when Mario and Zelda came out. When's the next Mario and Zelda coming? Yeah. Oh, right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to release it soon enough that it's not the end of the generation. Unless Nintendo's going to pull a Sony. Uh, Sony had, like, the, the best final year of PlayStation 3, like, ever. I, I've, I've never seen a company be like, we're going to release a bunch of big AAA games in the final year as we're launching PlayStation 4. And the next year, we're just going to port all those games. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, it was amazing, but Nintendo's never done that. They have a history of, we're just going to let it fizzle out. We might give you one game. Yeah. Then it's going to fizzle out. We're not going to give you anything. I mean, look what's happening with 3DS right now. I mean, we're getting Pokemon, but that's not Nintendo first party. Mm-hmm. That's technically a second party studio making it that they don't own. So, what's the big Nintendo made? You know, it, Metroid? Samus Returns? A remake? I mean, Samus Return was... It, it, it was a good I game. played the game, it was great. It yeah, was great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not that. knocking the game, but but it's like that's not like that's not a big game. That's not like uh, you know an Animal Crossing or uh, another Mario game or something. Um, it feels like the games we are getting are kind of side dish games. Mm-hmm. And right. some of that I think is because they're, they're trying to phase out the 3DS. But that's kind of my point is once you start getting to like the end of the generation for a device, Nintendo kind of starts like not making really really great games for it anymore. Um, that that people will go out and buy a system for. I don't think there's a lot of people that went on and bought a 3DS to play Metroid. I think it's just people who already owned it said, hey, sure. Yeah, or gigantic Metroid fans. Well, obviously. I mean, they, they do exist. They exist for every game. As much as I crapped on Metroid before in terms of sales, the people that do buy Metroid really, really, really buy every Metroid. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, I can't wait for Metroid Prime 4. All right. Dude, so, I'm ready for that game. Oh, I'm, I'm so ready. I've been, like, I don't even understand why Metroid Prime 3 got crap. It was so good. I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to go. 